Akamai stock has risen over 19% over the last 12 months. The average rating from Wall Street analysts is a strong buy. This company is making big waves in the tech space. Let's value the stock to figure out if it's a buy or a sell. Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott, and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Akamai stock by analyzing their financial ratios and dissecting their financial statements so we can determine if the stock is a buy or a sell. Akamai is the largest and oldest content delivery network in the world. Akamai's content delivery network serves 20% of all web traffic. The company operates a network of servers around the world and rents out capacity on these servers to customers who want their websites to work faster by distributing content from locations near the user. When a user navigates to the URL of an Akamai customer, their browser is redirected to one of Akamai's copies of the website. CDNs minimize delays when loading web pages by reducing the physical distance between the server and user. So instead of having one server that all users pull from, because if someone from China wanted to look at information on a US website, it would take a lot longer than someone in the US and vice versa. If somebody from the US wanted to pull from a Chinese website, it would take a lot longer than someone in China. Also, Akamai saves all the information into the cloud. So even if your website crashes, your customers aren't affected because they can still pull the information from Akamai servers in the cloud. You can see from this list, lots of big companies use Akamai service. Adobe, Alibaba, Coca-Cola, lots of big companies. Without using a CDN, websites are likely to crash with high user volume. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 17.4 billion market cap. They're trading at 106.71. And to get shares outstanding, it's market cap divided by stock price gives you shares outstanding, 163 million. Let's look at the financials. Free cash flow is how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flows, cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So if a company has positive free cash flow, it makes it a lot easier for them to acquire other businesses, pay down debt, pay dividends, or invest back into their business to grow it. If a company has negative free cash flow, it might not be able to do any of those things unless it takes on more debt. And this company has positive and pretty consistent free cash flow each year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. They also have positive and pretty consistent net income each year. The revenue looks really good. It grows six to 8% a year. Let's look at the financial statements to get more information. This is the income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales for the company, and that was 2.9 billion in 2019. Below that is cost of revenue, and these are the expenses directly related to making a company's products or services. The difference between these two numbers is the gross profit. Below that is operating expenses, and these are the expenses not directly tied to making the products or services. This includes salary for support functions like accounting and marketing, also marketing expenses, depreciation. The difference between gross profit and operating expense is operating income. You want to make sure the company you're investing in has positive operating income because if it doesn't, that means it needs to take on more debt just to run its day-to-day -day operations. And this company has positive and healthy operating income each year. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt, also the interest they receive from their investments. Below that is other, and they have special income charges of $29 million, $19 million in restructuring, and $10 million in other special charges. Let's look deeper into what these are. I pulled this from the 10K, $17.2 million in restructuring, $1.9 million of acquisition-related costs, and $10 million of legal and stockholder matter costs. The $17.2 million charge is mentioned here. The restructuring charge relates to certain headcount reductions and software charges. Akamai acquires several businesses a year, so it has costs involved when it acquires those businesses. Acquisition related costs were 1.9 million, 1 million, and 5.5 million the past three years. It also mentions in the 10K what these acquisition costs may be, and it mentions transaction fees, advisory fees, and other fees. They don't give too much information on the $10 million legal costs. There's just this little blurb in the 10K that says the costs are related to non-routine stockholder matters. 
Even with these negative amounts in the other field, they still have pretty good net income each year. Let's look at the cash flow statement. The way you calculate free cash flow is operating cash flow minus capex. As you can imagine, they have a pretty good amount of capex each year. But even so, they still have significant cash flow left over to grow the business. The way you calculate operating cash flow, it's net income, then you add back the non-cash items. Depreciation is usually the largest, and you also adjust for changes in working capital. Working capital are things like changes in receivables, payables, inventory, things like that. So everything looks pretty good on their financials. No big red flags, they're operating profitably. Let's look at a capital structure. $1.8 billion of debt, $3.7 billion of equity. They pay 2.68% interest on their debt, and cost of debt is 2.41%. To calculate cost of debt, it's interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. One third of that capital structure is debt, and two thirds is equity. The cost of equity is 4.7%, and we use a capital asset pricing model to figure that out. Part of the CAPM formula is the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a pretty low beta, 0.31, so the stock moves one third of the market. Their WAC is 3.94%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that's 30.4 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $28.2 billion. We divide that by 163 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 173. They're trading at 107, so they're trading at a 38% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them at 103 a share, so they're saying the stock is a sell. They're saying it's slightly overvalued. Their valuation is based off the average analyst estimate. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. The stock price has only gone up the past five years, so it's at a pretty high point, almost at its all-time high. The stock is right here in blue. It's performing worse than the NASDAQ, which is in orange. The S&P is in black, and this is the past five years. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd have $21,186. That's a 111% return. That's an average annual return of 7.79%. If you're looking for a stock that pays a dividend, this is not the stock because this company has never paid a dividend and it does not intend to pay a dividend. Their focus is to reinvest the money back into their business to grow it. For tax purposes, if you hold the stock for greater than one year, it really doesn't matter if you receive dividends or sell the stock at a gain. But if you sold the stock within a year and made a profit, you'd have to pay ordinary income taxes, which is 10% to 37%, depending on your tax rate. But if you held the stock for at least 60 days and received a dividend, you would only pay the capital gain gains rate, which is 0% to 20%, depending on your tax bracket. Obviously, Akamai provides a really important service, but if there's other companies that steal their ideas and use them illegally, there's not much Akamai can do besides suing them. So that is a risk you're taking, especially if a company overseas tries to use their patents, copyrights, or trademarks to do the same thing they're doing, this could really affect their business. A big part of Akamai's service is helping their customers against cyber attacks. It is possible Akamai could receive a cyber attack since a company does have control of a lot of sensitive information. But Akamai is continuously spending money to make sure this does not happen. Akamai serves lots of really large customers, so it is possible those customers will build in-house systems to do what Akamai does. This could affect this company's revenue and bottom line, of course. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average P.E. for the market is 17.4, the median is 15.4. P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. There are 36.4, so investors are paying $36.40 for $1 of earnings. The average price to sales ratio is 4.6, the median is 2.0. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They're at 6.0, so investors are paying $6 for $1 revenue. The average price to book is 4.7. The median is 2.3. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're at 4.8, so investors are paying $4.80 for $1 book value. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities on the balance sheet. 
The average interest coverage ratio is 12.6, so the median is 3.9. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They're at 11.7, so they can easily cover their interest payments. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes. It's also called operating income on the income statement. The average ROE is 13%, the median is 12%. ROE is net income over equity. They're at 13%, they're at average. The average current ratio is 1.8, the median is 1.3. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. There are 3.2, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. Current assets are assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. Examples are cash, accounts receivables, and inventory. Current liabilities are debts and payables due within 12 months. Examples are current debt and accounts payable. A current ratio above 2 may be a sign of inefficiency. Let's look at the current assets. They have $1.5 billion of cash, so they have a lot of cash on their balance sheet. They may be sitting on a lot of cash for an acquisition target. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on 12 companies in the same industry as Akamai. And Akamai is right here in the beginning. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they are a lot worse in PE because the average is so low in the industry. Price to sales, they're better than the average. Also better in price to book. They have the highest current ratio of all the companies. They're worse in ROE, they're a little better in debt, and they're a small company relative to the average because there's some monsters in this industry, Microsoft to name one, and they don't pay a dividend as most companies in this industry don't. They just reinvest their money back into their business. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 38% discount. Their ratios and financials look pretty good. Let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. I respond to all comments. Also, if you'd like to do a private Zoom session with me, receive a custom valuation, or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on a link in the description below. Thanks for watching.